Hi everyone, this is Pepper from Pepper DeLuca, well, whatever you're really watching on me. And today I'm going to be making watercolor paint and painting uh, some comics. Uh, so here we go. For this process, you'll need several palette knives, gum arabic solution, honey or glycerin, pigment powders, one piece of tempered glass, just remember to brace it underneath so it doesn't move as it does in mine, distilled water, measuring spoons, and one paint muller. The paint muller can be substituted for anything that has a flat bottom surface and is glass. You don't want anything porous. Anyways, here's the videos for the making of the paint for the comic. This first paint up is a green color. I have yet to name these two colors, so if you have any suggestions, put them below in the comments. Anyways, this first camp paint color is a green base color. It starts off with PG-17 as the base, which is the most pigment powder that it's going to have in it. Uh, PY-45, which is also known as raw sienna. Uh, and then the last one is PY-74. The reason why I did these three in combination is I like the color variation and I do enjoy the outcome of what it's going to look like as you see in the picture when I was doing the list before. Uh, mixing this one is a little bit difficult as far as uh, the P. G17, also known as Emerald Green, the company that I get it from, uh, it absorbs liquids pretty quickly, um, but it doesn't dry out. It just makes things very thick and viscous. Um, so when making it, it can be a little bit difficult, but that's what the distilled water is for. Uh, I thinned it out a little so that I could make sure that I can get it mold um, because it does have a granular texture if you don't mull it um, after getting it wet because, you know, you don't want that. You don't want a chalky surface. And mulling it will create a nice thin layer uh, on the top of the surface of the paper or the medium that you're putting it on. And it'll just be nice overall. Uh, also, the other thing I like about this color is it can be moving into the other color that is created later, um, since I use uh, PY74 in both of these mixes. Uh, anyhow, enjoy!
After I was done mulling the paints, I got out some old bottle caps that I, we had laying around the house. Um, the purpose of this was just to recycle and not have to go out and purchase new half pans or full pans uh, for this process because I just wanted a small amount to go in each one of the bottle caps. I got this idea from another artist in Colorado who makes her own uh, watercolor paint as well uh, and I'm going to have a video later on showcasing her watercolors um but as of right now that's where the idea came from so uh her link will be below in the com um in the descriptions not in the comments well i could probably put it in the comments i don't know i'm just rambling now sorry bye oh uh going on to the next color so yeah i'm back that was a long you know two second goodbye um, anyhow, um, I made sure to clean all the surfaces that I was working with so that I didn't have the green mix in with the red prior to when I wanted it to. Um, this red color starts off with a base of what is known as a French pigment that's semi-transparent known as black currant red. It is a very wonderful thing. Um, I've worked with this on several mixes and on its own. It is very, very um, dry to begin with. So when you add a little bit of moisture, it doesn't soak it up as fast as the green, um, the, the green did. But at the same time, I did combine it with PY74, like I said. So this and the green should make a very nice looking brown when I combine them. Anyhow, uh... Mixing this one was a little bit fun because A, it's not as viscous, and B, um, well, it's just fun. The black currant red, it, when mixing it, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it creates a very nice texture. Um, it's very easy to glide over, and it's just all around a good, you know, good time to mull. Um, but, also, in both paints, I just want to clarify, I do use honey. You can definitely use glycerin. I use honey in the um, making of my paints just because I like the feel of the re-wetting process. 
Uh, not to say that you can't use it or you can use it. It's up to you. Uh, I just know that I get my honey from a place here in Colorado. So it's locally sourced and they take care of their bees. So with that saying, please enjoy the rest of the video.
Hi everyone. So uh, that is the end of the red color being mixed. Uh, again, if you have color suggestions for both the red and the green, please list them in the comments below and I will take them into consideration. Uh, I made, did make some color dots. Uh, however, I will only have those when I do events. So just keep a lookout for when I am going to do one. Uh, if you would like to get some of those from me. Anyhow, uh, I would like to go on and make sure that I have the rest of the video and the comic page process that I do. Uh, I have page one of a comic story that I want to share with you and it have, hasn't even been penciled or inked yet so I'll be doing that in this video as well and then concluding with the red and green combination colors uh, going into it so you'll get to see that nice brown that I talked about. I started off um, with the drawing session with the character of the comic that I'm actually going to be doing. Uh, this is a short comic that's like 10 pages max. Uh, one off, not really sure where it's gonna go, but it's based off of a character in another of my comics that I've put on, not a permanent hiatus, but maybe just a hiatus for right now. Anyways, I drew three different versions of this character. Um, originally, I had made her an older, uh, like in the 50s or 60s range. Um, but instead, I made, wanted to make her look a little bit younger because she is supposed to be a witch. So, I mean, why not? Anyways, um, so I chose the third design. And then uh, after I finished the design... I didn't like the shorts, so I took the dress from the first design and kind of wanted to do something like that. And then I realized the first page, she's not even wearing clothes. But anyway, um, after that, I made the layout of the comic page uh, based off of what you see there as the rough script. Excuse me. Um, and um and and i basically went from there uh i wanted to make sure that i got everything um done and all of that fun stuff and yeah um anyways uh go ahead and listen to some music all right bye
Sorry for the jumpiness of the cut in between the drawing session and with the inking going into the watercolors. However, I took a break in between the inking and the watercolors uh, to get some food in my system. Uh, I've been at this all day long and I wanted to make sure I got it done today or in the wee hours of the morning on Friday. Um, so essentially I just used the two paints that I made at the very beginning of the video and it was fun to finally get to use them. As you can see, I have the swatch right there and the swatch of them mixing. So it's like the brown color, um, with the lighting and everything. Um, you don't have to tell me twice. I know I need to get new lighting for my uh, apartment. I'm in the basement, so um, I have to use a lot of light, and right now don't have the money for it. Anyhow, um, I wanted the background just generally green, and then I wanted the red and the brown hues that I can get with mixing the two colors together on the furniture and the flooring, and then like a grayish brown color. Um, more so for the skin, the hair, all the shading and everything like that, because honestly, I don't think I'm actually going to use any type of form of skin tone. I think I'm just going to use shading techniques. So doesn't matter what race or ethnicity someone thinks that the character is, I'm just going to shade it like they are all the same color and be done with it because I don't got time for that. And I'm only using two colors. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of when I was doing things uh, in school and in after school for graphic design purposes, using two colors only in like a duotone or parched tone type deal, um, which is basically a black and white image that you convert to only having two types of inks when you go to print it. It costs people a little bit more money, but sometimes the results are can be very amazing. Um, it also helps with if you wanted to do something similar to uh, lithograph printing or um, just uh, silk printing because you can develop a little bit more uh, of the variations and actually get different hues uh, by mixing colors uh, in that and Anyways, I think I've rambled too long. I am really tired at this point. So thank you for sticking with me uh, on this video. I know it's long, um, but thank you very, very much. Bye.
and we are finally done with this video. Thank you for sticking through it again. I know it was a long one. Um, I'm going to try to shorten them to single piece by piece and then do a playlist like that. Uh, this is the first time that I've done a video this long with this many speaking parts and I'm learning as I'm going. Uh, I have not done video editing in a very long time. Um, anyhow, thank you again. Uh, if you like this, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to subscribe to me, go ahead and subscribe. If I have that little bell, go ahead and get the little bell so that, you know, you can get notified too. Uh, thank you very much and have a great rest of your day. If you have any questions about what I've done in, here, in this video, just leave them below and I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks. Bye.